a credit to give him a bit of shine because of in all the madness that happened um he stood out like an absolute beacon um so this is the absolute unit that managed to in his all his kind graces um escort a guy that was getting absolutely washed by the crowd out of a crowd well yeah washed by a horde of teenagers get him out there before his head got taken off his shoulders and he really showed a lot of humility in the interview i wasn't surprised at the fact i think anyone that would do that put themselves at risk of getting hit in the head um by putting themselves in between an angry mob and a, somebody that represents a, you know the British, what are they called? Britain First Movement, or whatever they are. If, uh, would you call them far right? I don't know whether they deemed them to be, but to do that in his case was very brave because, you know, there, there could have been some backlash too, right? He could have easily been labeled as a coon or something, but he decided to do it regardless. And yeah, credit to the dude. So this is from Channel 4 News. This is um, uh, a guy called Patrick Hutchinson, who was pictured carrying a protester to safety at a violent demo, says as what happened. Let's just hear what he has to say about it put the volume up a little bit on arrival i know you know at this point the guy was already on the floor um it was pretty hectic um it was almost like a stampede there was lots of people you know there were people trying to protect him but unsuccessfully and then the guys went in there um they sort of put a little cordon around him to stop um him receiving any more um you know um physical harm he, he, he was still yeah, yeah he, was, he was under physical harm you know he was under his life was under under threat yeah he was getting washed to be fair i think if that's the same video we saw before he was getting absolutely spun around and credit to the guy man right like he defers already to his group of guys who made the cordon around him you could just tell this guy is a shining example of what we should be as a nation just tolerant but it made me think you know in general like those riots on the weekend just made me laugh like no no part of me felt threatened or felt intimidated you know growing up in the ends you've seen these people you know they exist you live around, you live amongst them some of them have you know you know some of them have their own prejudices that they you know have to deal with in themselves some of them have experiences they've gone through that have made them think that way but regardless you just live you just live with it um and generally most of the rage comes from them towards us as opposed to the other way around for the most part we don't like i remember even in school there'd be some absolute nutters in our area that'd go around with their dads and stuff like you know trying to hunt after some black kid who they thought maybe did their kid you know did their kid over or something i don't know some kid beat up some white boy in school and then he got his dad and his brother who happened to be 22 at the time to come and beat up one of my friends and he just they're on the streets looking for him you know going to cages and stuff and you know going to parks and just roaming around looking for a child essentially to beat up and you're like these guys are weird isn't it and you just look at them like fucking psychos we didn't ever get scared or think oh these guys are gonna kill us no just for these guys are fucking losers you just didn't want to be that person when you were growing up so when you got older and you know you had a bit of a growth spur or you got some courage and you thought you know what i'm gonna fight back you soon realize the moment you hit them back they don't have an answer they're all chest and arms out and you what you what you know cooking their neck back like a flipping turkey but once you hit them once it's just over this all you know they just have no idea what's going on it's sort of like um it reminds me of that famous mike tyson quote in it like everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face and um whilst they did that i sort of just thought well if he stays here he's he's not gonna make it so i just went under <laughs> scooped him up he's not gonna make it of, top lad man and uh sort of started marching towards the police with him whilst all the guys were sort of surrounding me and protecting me and the um and the guy i had on my shoulder and all I this could actually in feel seconds. i could actually feel you know you know you know what i thought he was gonna say i said that i thought he was gonna say i could actually feel his life slipping away from me as i was carrying him and i knew if i didn't get any help he would die on my shoulder and i didn't want that smoke you know imagine you pick some guy up uh, trying to escort him to a health a safety point or an extraction zone and then he ends up dying on your shoulder because he's been punched in the head too many times that's not the smoke you want I honestly thought you can say that I could feel his life slipping away from me. His heartbeat was <laughs> racing against my shoulder. But he's a much better guy than I am, of course. Strikes and hits as I was carrying him, you know. So, you know, these guys were probably taking some of that Bloody themselves yeah. on, on, on their person. It sounds like it was a very uh, scary moment. Yeah, it was. You don't think about that though, at the time. You just sort of do what you've got to do, you know what I mean? Top man. I can only imagine when, when I, last night when I was thinking about it, I was thinking to myself if the uh, the other three police officers that were standing around when George Floyd was, um, you know, murdered, 
um, had thought about, you know, intervening and stopping their uh, their colleague from doing what he was doing, like what we did. Um, you know, George, you know, George Floyd would be alive today still. Very true, but unfortunately, that thin blue line, um, that loads that they have between each other, it's just, it's, it doesn't even, there's no comparison. Like at the moment, I'm watching this series called um, The Bureau. It's a French spy thriller, right? It's amazing. And um, one of the main tenets around it is that, you know, everyone essentially is disloyal as fuck. They preach about loyalty, right? That's one of the tenets of one of the mantras of the French um, Secret Service. But essentially, everyone's a double agent or a triple agent or, you know, whatever. They're all working for different um, foreign powers and they have different people, different interests inside their business. It's just a very, very murky world. And those guys have, you know, there's actually real life consequences at stake if somebody leaks something, information or isn't cared for or whatever it may be. And they're very disloyal. But then the police force, you know, mostly made up of average everyday folk like you and I, who haven't necessarily gone for any kind of rigorous training. They've got this sense of loyalty that surpasses anything you'd see from the special services, from the, from the secret services of countries around the world, anything you'd see from the mob, anything you'd see from any kind of organized crime conglomerate, anything you'd see from like a cartel and without the threats of violence and stuff, right? Because the cartel have threats of violence. If you snitch, you know, your whole family tree gets hung headless from a bridge somewhere. But the police don't have any of that, and they still have such a you know such, that 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 they, that shields has such an influence, such a hold on police officers that they can't see right and wrong. They only just see the badge. It's very bizarre. I mean, you you kind of become a national hero. <laughs> yeah, like like I say, I mean, I was just the guy that was caught on camera with the yeah, with him on my man. shoulder, but top man. Like, all these guys were all party to it. Um, without them protecting me, I would have probably got stampeded as well. <laughs> Underneath it, you know, so it was like a team effort. What a what a nice guy, man. What a nice guy. And again, an example to all of us. Um, what a nice, nice dude.